As you age, it is normal to notice changes in your vision. There's a few common changes for older adults like losing the ability to see up close or presbyopia, having trouble distinguishing colors or loss of contrast sensitivity like you need to determine blue from black, or even needing more time to adjust to changing levels of light. While many of these problems are often easily corrected with glasses or contact lenses and improved lighting might help, it's important to understand our risk for some eye disease diseases and conditions that increase as we grow older, and some of these are a little more serious. And of course, as an optometrist, one of my most important pieces of advice is to keep your eyes as healthy as possible by getting regular eye exams so any problems can be spotted early. So in today's video, we are talking about the aging eye, some things that are normal, some things you might have already experienced, but also going over some of those age-related eye diseases that may cause problems with your vision. back to eye school with me, Dr. D, where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. And like I said, I'm an optometrist. I publish videos weekly about all sorts of topics, usually dry eye and ocular aesthetics, but I'd love to have you here on the channel. So give a little love tap on the subscribe button down below so that you can see all of our videos. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what you can do to protect your vision as you get older. So the first thing I would say, and this is so easy, have your eyes checked regularly by an eye care professional, either an optometrist or ophthalmologist. Optometrists are the primary eye care professionals. We do a wonderful job at routine eye care, primary eye care, and so seeing an optometrist yearly is a great idea. So by doing this, you can find and treat any problems early and help protect your vision and prevent vision loss. Before going to an eye doctor, make sure to make a list of all of your questions and concerns to share with the doctor. I love it when my patients are organized in this fashion so that I don't forget to address anything that's important to them during their exam. We also want to know what medications you're taking. Some of these medications, in fact many medications, can affect the eyes. I get this almost every day. I would say every day somebody will say, well I take such and such for my high blood pressure or or this or that, but it, it doesn't affect my eyes. And the reality is there's a whole host of systemic conditions that do affect the eyes, hypertension, diabetes, autoimmune diseases, all of these things can affect the eye. And there's even specific medications that are known to have ocular effects like Plaquenil, amiodarone, and many others. Normal changes in your aging eye are usually not gonna harm your vision. There are some things that just sort of happen and ways that your vision changes that are not necessarily degenerative, not necessarily something that will cause an eye problem, but then there's other things that happen during aging that can be an eye problem. So let's try to sort of suss that out. So one thing that can happen as we get older is your eyes might leak tears a little bit more, like water, right? So this can happen with light sensitivity, wind, or temperature changes, and you might notice that wearing sunglasses and using eye drops occasionally can help. Sometimes watering eyes can be a symptom of dry eye or an infection or even a blocked tear duct. Your eye care professional can treat these problems and so it's important to ask them. Many people don't notice any signs or symptoms in early stages of eye diseases. That's why we're such strong advocates for yearly dilated eye exams performed by an eye doctor. It's the only way to find some of the common eye diseases while they're easier to treat and before they cause vision loss. So everyone over age 50 should have a dilated eye exam every year or as recommended by your eye care professional, even if you have good vision and don't wear contacts or glasses. So another thing I hear all the time is like, oh, well, I have great vision. I don't need to see you. And the reality is there are so many eye conditions that can occur without symptoms that everybody should have an eye exam every year. Then after age 60, you should get a dilated eye exam um, every year or two as well. This is really gonna depend on your systemic conditions. People with diabetes, high blood pressure, definitely need to get dilated once a year. Ultimately, this will come down to you and your eye doctor. 
During your exam, we will put drops in your eyes to widen or dilate your pupils so that we can better see the inside of each eye. Your vision is going to potentially be blurry, definitely for up close, maybe even for distance, for a period of usually four to six hours after the exam. And your eyes can be more sensitive to light because of the dilation drops, which widen your pupil. This only lasts a couple of hours, a few hours, maybe four to six. And so some patients feel more comfortable having someone else drive them. Others feel that they see just fine to drive. If you wear glasses or contact lenses, and then you can get your prescription checked too. Make sure to bring with you your contact lenses and glasses that you already wear so that we can make an accurate judgment on the changes in your vision. Because even small changes in your sight or your prescription can increase your risk for falls or injuries, meaning being just a little bit undercorrected can be a risk factor for falling down. And we certainly don't want that, especially as we get older. At your yearly eye exam, you'll be checked for diseases like diabetes and high blood pressure because these diseases can cause eye problems if not controlled or treated. And the eye is the only place in the whole body where we can see the blood vessels directly. That's why we can diagnose high blood pressure, cholesterol issues. We can see plaques in the eye when they occur. It's actually incredible to see the retinal vasculature and the eye is the only place where you have that sort of view at a person's cardiovascular system. And so it's so critically important to go in for an eye exam because there's so much more we're doing than your contact lenses and your glasses. As you age, it's also important to protect your eyes from sunlight. I want you to wear sunglasses that block UV radiation and a hat with a wide brim when you're outside. I also would recommend stopping smoking. I tend to think it is never too late. You can also make smart food choices, albeit slowly if you need to. You don't have to go from fully steak and potatoes to kale and pomegranate in one day. You can just make small adjustments and maybe work with your portion sizes as you make healthier food choices. It's so important as we get older to be physically active and maintain a healthy weight. Walking is one of the best exercises for most patients if they're able to tolerate it. Obviously, if not, there's other options like swimming and cycling and those sorts of things which are very wonderful, but it's just so important to continue to exercise. That's helpful in maintaining normal blood pressure, managing diabetes, um, and if you spend a lot of time on the computer, especially as you're getting older, make sure to take a break every 20 minutes to look 20 feet away for 20 seconds. That's the 20-20-20 rule, and it's just a great little tip for being on screens and computers. So let's talk about eye diseases and conditions that can cause problems in older adults. Some of these have few to like no early symptoms and regular eye exams are gonna be your best protection. If your eye care professional finds a problem early, there's often things that we can do to protect your vision. So one of the things we see a lot as patients get older is age-related macular degeneration. A AMD, ARMD, age-related um, macular degeneration harms the sharp central vision that's needed to see objects clearly and to do common things like driving and reading. We always ask about your family history because macular degeneration does tend to occur in families. In fact, I forget how many genes there are now that have been linked. I used to do genetic testing in my clinic, but we know that macular degeneration runs in families. However, what you inherited from a genetic standpoint is not necessarily what will be expressed you can impact whether or not your macular degeneration to some extent, you can impact whether or not it's expressed by not smoking, protecting your eyes from sunlight, eating green leafy vegetables, getting lots of omega-3 in your diet. And so I have patients who have lived a healthier lifestyle than maybe their parents and have not yet gotten macular degeneration. There's a couple of different types of macular degeneration. There's dry and there's wet. This really isn't a video to go all the way into that. But typically speaking, if you have some early drusen, you know, your doctors notice some early drusen, that's dry macular degeneration. And that is typically less severe than wet macular degeneration, which is the one that causes more sudden and severe vision loss and requires shots in the eye. Another age-related problem can be diabetic retinopathy, and this is because if you are diabetic, it often develops slowly, often with no early warning signs. Sometimes we are the first ones to diagnose diabetes in our patients and recommend um, blood tests be done. When you have diabetes, it's sort of a matter of the level of control and the amount of time that you've had it that tend to impact whether or not you have eye signs, right? So these are the, we can't control 
when you were diagnosed with diabetes, but we can control the control level. So keeping your blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, any additional systemic illnesses you have, if you can keep more of those under control, that can help prevent diabetic retinopathy or even slow its progress in those early stages. It's really important to catch those later stages early because the later stages involve neovascularization, which is the growth of new blood vessels. And if you have the growth of new blood vessels, you have to do laser, um, PRP is what it's called, to stop that from getting worse. Without doing laser, the implications of having neovascularization in the eye can be pretty bad. You can end up with retinal detachments, tractional retinal detachments, bleeds in the eye, bleeds in the vitreous, and significant vision loss, if not blindness, from that diabetic retinopathy. So if you have diabetes, don't put off your eye exam. And then we have cataracts, incredibly common. Common. It's clouding of the eyes lens that causes blurred or hazy vision. I did a whole video on the types of cataracts. There are different types. We have nuclear scler sclerosis, which is like yellowing of the lens that comes up. We have cortical changes, which look like little bicycle spokes in the lens and cause a lot of glare. And then there's posterior subcapsular. And then there's other types of cataracts too. We have traumatic cataracts and Christmas tree cataracts and posterior polar. There's other types, but the three most common I just mentioned it's sort of variable how those are gonna affect your vision. And some of them do come on really quickly. You might have been told, oh, they're early, they're baby cataracts, and then all of a sudden your vision's much worse. And that can be due to like posterior subcapsular cataracts coming on soon. Cataract surgery helps restore good vision and it's a safe treatment, it's a common treatment. If you have a cataract, your eye care professional will be able to tell you if it's time for surgery and send you to the surgeon of their choice as well as co-managing in your care. There is such a thing as leaving cataracts too long. You know, there are sort of more gagnean cataracts where get into trouble. It gets very, very thick. I will also say when you get into a white cataract, if you let it go for a long, long time, that does require more energy for the surgeon to get it out. And so you can have a tougher time recovering from that cataract surgery. Next we have glaucoma. So glaucoma is a huge issue. It causes a lot of blindness here in the United States and across the world. And it's usually caused, well, what it's caused by is having a high pressure inside the eye. And the problem with glaucoma is that you typically cannot feel that pressure. I made a whole video about eye pressure here. But if you don't treat that pressure, it can lead to loss of nerve fibers of your optic nerve. And your optic nerve is so important because it connects the eye to the brain. So it really is that communication line. And if that sustains damage, you can lose vision from that. The problem again, you don't feel the high pressure, you don't notice any vision loss until it's really, really advanced. And so you have to have eye exams to watch for glaucoma. We can detect rising eye pressure. We have incredible technology now to give us information about your optic nerve and whether or not it looks glaucomatous. And we can treat glaucoma. This is the thing. We can treat it early with prescription eye drops, laser surgery, and even interventional um, filtration surgeries to help normalize that pressure and prevent you from losing vision. Near and dear to my heart and something that gets more prevalent as we get older is dry eye. So dry eye occurs when the tear glands aren't working well, when you don't have a good tear film on the front surface of your eye. There's many, 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 many causes of it. There's many symptoms. You can feel stinging, burning, sandy, sandiness, grittiness, foreign body sensation, watering of the eyes, fluctuating vision, light sensitivity. It's common more so as people get older, especially women, especially after menopause. I made an entire video about that here. So as you get older, here are some things that are not, not normal, not common. Definitely see an eye doctor right away. So let's say you suddenly cannot see or everything looks blurry. There are a number of things that can happen as we get older with systemic illnesses, especially hypertension, and cholesterol issues like giant cell arteritis, temporal arteritis, that's also known as. You can have retinal vein occlusions, retinal artery occlusions, you can have loss of blood flow to the eye. Let's say you were to see a lot of new floaters, like tiny specks or cobwebs that seem to float across your vision or you had flashes of light, eye pain, double vision, redness of, or swelling of your eye or eyelid. Those are all things to call your doctor for and get an eye exam. 
All right, just a couple more conditions I tend to see in older patients that are not necessarily vision threatening. So the first I just alluded to in mentioning floaters, new floaters, suddenly new floaters, flashes. There is such thing as a posterior vitreous detachment. The vitreous is the fluid that fills the eye, it is attached at your retina at a couple of different places, your optic nerve, your macula, and out peripherally in your eye. And the vitreous does undergo some change as we get older, and that can cause us to see more floaters. Now the vitreous can also just completely detach away from the back of the eye, which is fine, but it can cause a lot of floaters and it can even cause some symptoms of flashes when it occurs. If this occurs, do not ignore it. Go to your eye doctor and have them look at your peripheral retina because PVDs or posterior vitreous detachments can cause retinal tears and retinal tears can get fluid underneath them and have a retinal detachment. So it's really, really, really important to see your eye doctor if you have floaters or flashes. Another thing that happens over time that everybody asks about and wonders about, but is Arcus senilis. So Arcus senilis is the whitening of the cornea. So right at that, what we call the limbus, right where the white part meets the clear part, you can get a white circle all the way around your cornea. And that is called Arcus senilis. And it comes on over time. It also, if it happens when you're younger, can be due to high cholesterol. But this is something that we see a lot in older patients. And sometimes my patients will say, why are my eyes turning blue? But it's that white circle that goes around. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's video about the aging eye and it gave you some guidelines as to when you should see the eye doctor, which honestly, just go see the eye doctor every year. There are so many aging concerns that you don't have to lose vision from. We can help you with that. So please go see an eye doctor every year if you do nothing else. But I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm glad you've made it this far. Thank you. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do that and hit the bell so you don't miss any notifications. That's it for today's iSchool class is dismissed.